what's going on guys? So, you know, buying a surfboard is definitely a big investment. They're not cheap. So when we pay a lot of money for one of these things, we want to make sure that we know how to take care of it properly before we surf and after we surf. So I just want to share a couple of my favorite quick tips that I do every time before I go out and when I get done surfing to make sure I keep my board in the best shape possible so I get lots and lots of life out of my surfboard. So let's go check it out. Taking care of your surfboard and all your equipment starts every time before you paddle out. A couple of quick things you can do every time before you paddle out is you wanna check your fins, make sure that they're screwed in, they're tight, they're flush to the board. The last thing you wanna do is be out in the middle of your session, lose a fin, and unless you have a replacement, your day's over. We also wanna make sure that we're checking our leash, making sure that the Velcro is still fresh, the, the ankle strap connects to your ankle. Uh, Snuggly, you wanna check all the joints of the leash and uh, make sure that it's fastened to the board in the correct way so that we don't have a, a leash failure out in the middle of our surf session. One of the first things I do every time I get back from surfing is I want to do like a visual check of the board and the rails to make sure that there are no dings. Uh, anytime we get a ding, basically it allows water to go inside the surfboard and water inside of a surfboard is like cancer, it spreads, it weakens the foam and can lead to uh, bigger problems. So you just want to do a quick visual check, run your fingers on the rail of the surfboard on the top, on the bottom, making sure there's no dings. Also about every 10 times that I surf, I will take all the wax off the top of my surfboard. I scrape it off because sometimes dings can happen underneath our feet or our knees from duck diving and we don't see them because they're covered with wax. They're taking on water which can weaken the surfboard and lead to the board breaking uh, way earlier than it normally would. Another couple rules uh, to remember is that we never want to leave our board in direct sunlight. As you can see, this board is a few months old. I take care of it nice and white. This board is really not that much older and you can see the, the major difference. This is a board that's been left in the sun quite a bit. It's yellow, it's sunburnt, this board isn't. With this board here, uh, what's gonna happen is the, the sun actually deteriorates the foam inside. It causes delamination where the fiberglass comes off the foam, which causes bubbling, all kinds of uh, uh, problems. So we wanna avoid that by keeping our board out of direct sunlight. If you absolutely have to leave your board on the beach, you need to cover it with a towel. Okay, if you can't put it in the shade, you need to cover it with a towel, make sure that it stays out and it doesn't get really, really hot. Also, another great tip is we never want to leave it inside our car, okay? We put it in our car, we drive to the beach, we take it out, it's with us the whole time. Even if you're not surfing, you don't want to put it back in your car and let it sit for a few hours. Inside your car, you can get to a few hundred degrees during the summertime, and I've actually seen boards warp completely sideways, and they're completely ruined, they're not fixable. Happened to a buddy of mine years ago, left this board in for like two hours, came back, brand new $500 surfboard completely useless and not able to be fixed. So we never, ever, ever want to leave our surfboard inside of our car. Just also, anytime we have dings, that we find a ding on our surfboard, we want to make sure we have it repaired uh, right away. You don't want to try and put wax in it or do anything like that. There's great quick fixes uh, called Sun Cure or Solar Res you can use to fix your board on the fly. Uh, or if you can, take it to someone and have it professionally repaired. And even after we have it repaired, we want to make sure that we check it periodically to make sure that the repair is not coming up, that it's not taking on water. Now I found a, a really small ding in my board today. Not a big deal right now, so what I did is to, to make sure that it wasn't taking on water, I just kind of put my mouth to it, took a little taste of it, kind of sucked on a little bit. If there's salt water coming out, that means that there's water going in your surfboard, needs to be fixed right away. I've got a little one on my board, there's no water coming in, but that's something that I'm gonna pay attention to because if it gets bigger, I'm gonna need to fix it immediately before I go out surfing again. And a couple more tips on storing our surfboard. Really, really, always want to make sure that we keep the board indoors as much as possible. I don't like to keep my board in a garage or at least somewhere where it's kind of cool. We don't want it to be exposed to high heat. I try and put it in a board rack always, uh, leaning up with some protection for the tail. We never want to stand our surfboard up on the side of our car, um, standing up next to it where wind can blow it off. And we always want to have protection under the tail whenever the surfboard is standing up. So if we have to stand it up or put it in a corner, we need to put a towel or some padding underneath the tail because that's a great place to get cracks and dings in our surfboard that will then start taking in water. So guys, I hope you like the tip. Hope this helps you to take care of your surfboard, get a long, long life out of your surfboard. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Of course, we love it when you guys subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.